So here it is, Sony's FX3, the most compact camera in Sony's cinema lineup. But you've probably already heard the news that it's basically a rehoused A7S III. The guts of the camera are pretty much the same. The same specs, the same colors, the same slow-mo capabilities. But that's not a bad thing. I mean, the A7S III is an incredible camera. It's literally the camera that made me jump ship and start using a Sony for my daily driver. But anyways, I'm already late to this game. So there's already a whole bunch of other videos out there about this camera. But let me ask you guys some questions and let's go answer them. Let's go. Is it better than the A7S III, yes or no? If you already have an A7S III, I wouldn't necessarily sell it to get the FX3 because it's so similar when it comes to you know image quality. But if you're shopping for a camera and you're like me where you only really care about the video, then the FX3 seems to make more sense because it comes with a top handle and the top handle has those XLR inputs. Opposed to if you were to get the XLR adapter for the A7S III, then that would end up being actually more. So if you're planning on getting those XLR inputs anyways, then you might as well get the FX3. It'll end up saving you money in the long run. Also check it out, I had to climb down that mountain to get down here and I, and I fell, so I got a little boo-boo. Oh gosh, it's bleeding more than it was earlier. Anyways, do the vents compromise the weather sealing? Sony did say that it doesn't affect the weather sealing, so that is good. The whole idea of this camera is just making it more professional video friendly and everyone seems to use the word professional slightly differently but when I say professional I mean it can't be like things that you have to tinker with it has to be solid and you also have to have that peace of mind that it's gonna get you through whatever you're trying to do Sony wouldn't put out a camera that they would consider as part of their professional lineup if it didn't have at least as good weather ceiling as before hey, I'm trying to record over here you guys are ruining my audio what the heck are you crying I'm not crying what is that is that your underwear Ew! I'm trying to film a beautiful video. Also, guys, if you guys want nice quality underwear, go to Target and get yourself some good fella underwear. This video is about the FX3. If you wear nice underwear, you're gonna get confidence and you're gonna reach your goals. It's so simple. Backing you up on this, Dylan. Yeah, it is very true. The kind of underwear you have determines where you're gonna go in life. You'll like. All right, all right I've had enough of this bullshit. My buddy Julio says, "What does it feel like basically using a rehoused A7S3?" Feels exactly like using a rehouse A7S III. It's like the same thing, but the buttons are different. So, you know. David's Dream Factory asks, is it good for a Cine lifter setup? Actually, I think so. Oh my God, these waves got awfully close to me. What, what is that? How long have you been there? Good oh fellas God. underwear, get yours today. Do the colors look good? Well, S-Log 3 looks pretty much the same as the A7S III. So I say it's very good compared to previous Sony cameras. I still think there's cameras that look slightly better. Like snap, that's definitely coming close. I have a feeling that at some point I'm just gonna be like talking to the camera and one big one's gonna come over. But whatever, then we could test out the weather ceiling on this camera. Is it a good camera for a beginner to upgrade from mirrorless to cinema camera? It, that's kind of tough to say because I don't really feel like this camera I would really consider as a cinema camera. Like it feels more like a mirrorless camera than a cinema camera. Why should I buy this over a Blackmagic Pocket cinema camera? I would personally go for this camera because I like the autofocus capability because half the time I'm using it for vlogging. I like the full frame right out of camera. I like how lightweight, I like the flip screen, stuff like that. But the Black Magic, you're gonna be able to get for a fraction of the cost. Black Magic has stuff like false color and those kinds of features like anamorphic and stuff like that that you don't get out of this FX3. But it depends on what you're trying to shoot and your project and your budget. Speaking of black magic, check this out. The 6K Pro is finally here. Built-in ND filters and one of my favorite features. Dual quarter inch threads right there on the bottom. Yes, thank you. Having multiple ports down here really make it so that you can get a really good grip on a tripod or a gimbal. Or if you're gonna accessorize it and maybe send some rails out, it's gonna make sure that your camera's not shifting around. Anyone that's trying to use a follow focus system, you get everything set up, calibrated, and the camera just slightly shifts and then all of a sudden you have to remount everything and reset up everything and calibrate. It's such a pain in the ass. Now with the FX3, I think it's cool that they gave us a couple of mounting points throughout the camera. So that may come into play if you're trying to mount a small monitor directly on the body. But really, I just wish they gave us one more slot down there on the bottom. For example, the C70 has a 3 8 inch right there in the middle and 2 quarter inches. It's a little bit weird that it's going this way instead of this way like a traditional camera. But still, at least it's enough for me to get some sort of plate that I can and adapt to it and really get a secure hold without having to wrap the camera with a full-on cage like this. This is the cage for the A7S III and with the FX3, if I'm gonna accessorize it, I'm still gonna need a cage. How's this image looking by the way? This is s Cinetone, so I'm not gonna color grade it. This is just the image and color straight out of camera. Earlier, we were at the beach, we were shooting s 
log three and then we color graded that. S log three, I think is still gonna be the way to go. You just get so much more dynamic range. As Cinetone in my past experiences, it looks decent, but you tend to lose highlights pretty quickly. I mean, that was one of the features that was separating the FX3 and the A7S was that with the FX3, you get S Cinetone. But now with the firmware update on the A7S3, we also have that as well. I'm trying to set up this wireless printer and they're asking me to install something off the CD. I don't even have a CD drive. How do I, what do I? So I asked you guys on Instagram what you thought about this FX3 release. Majority of you said it's the same camera. What the f same camera with a higher price. I bought the A7S III two months ago. If I had the choice today, I would have gone with the FX3. Same here. It's a slightly different camera for a slightly different user. Ain't nothing to be upset about. It's like Toyota using the same engine in multiple cars. It doesn't make one car better than another. It's all about what you want to drive. It's kind of 50-50. Yeah, I think most of us are pretty much on the same page. Yes, it's working. Wireless printer. Hell yeah. I've been using a caveman printer for the longest time where I have to plug it in via USB. Uh-uh, not anymore, baby. Woo! Now, overall, I love the camera. It's basically an A7S 3 and I love the A7S 3 so of course, I'm gonna love this FX3. But at the same time, there was a small part of me that was a little bit disappointed. It's like I wanted a PS5 for my birthday and instead I got a, a wireless printer which is actually still pretty awesome. I mean, that's a game changing. It's laser also, so I don't have to constantly change out ink cartridges and I don't have to go plug it in. And, you know, ink dries up over time. And uh, yeah, it's not color because laser printers, you know, if you want a color one, it's gonna be huge. But you know, it's black and white. But if I'm gonna print out a photo, I'm gonna send it to Costco or something to have someone. What are we talking about again? FX3. Okay, back on track. Focus, focus, focus. I think part of the problem was that the camera leaked ahead of time and then everyone had these really high expectations, including myself. I think a lot of us started thinking, ooh, is it gonna have built-in ND filters? Is it gonna have the sensor from the A1? Is it gonna have a lot of cinematic features and bigger LCD and all that good stuff? But uh, no, it's the same A7S 3 One feature that I was really surprised that they didn't include was shutter angle. So it's still adjusted by shutter speed, which is how you control the shutter speed with mirrorless cameras. But pretty much any cinema camera, you can generally go into shutter angle mode and you would just set that to 180 degrees and then you could just forget about your shutter speed because what do you do when you go to 24 frames per second? Usually you set your shutter speed to as close as you can to 1 48th of a second, right? And then you go to 60 frames per second and you set your shutter speed to 1 20th of a second, right? But if you have it at 180 degrees, it's automatically gonna go 24 frames per second, 1 48th of a second. Now the FX3, you can't even go 1 48th of a second. You still have to go to the closest denomination. Did I say that word right? 1 50th of a second, which sure, that's only a 4% difference from 1 48th of a second to 1 50th of a second. But again, if it's a cinema camera, it should at least be able to do 1 48th of a second. I mean, that would be something that would be easy to add in a firmware update. So maybe if enough of us beg for it, maybe they'll add it in. I do also want to circle back on that comment about the Cine Lifter. Now, Cine Lifter is basically like a FPV drone, but much bigger. So you can mount something like an FX3 on top. And actually, this FX3 would be a perfect Cine Lifter camera because one, it's very small and lightweight relatively, but you could also have the FX3 record the gyro data. And that's awesome because usually I'm flying with a GoPro and I actually shoot it completely unstabilized. It's just kind of the raw image right out of camera, but it records that gyro data. So I put it through a software called Real Steady, which will analyze the gyro data and stabilize my footage. And what's great about that process is that I have full control afterwards on how much I want to stabilize it. If I want it super buttery smooth or if I want it to be a little bit more responsive. But with the FX3, sure, you can use the built-in image stabilization, which is pretty decent. It uses the IBIS and also optical image stabilization if your lens supports it, but you could also have the option to just turn off all the stabilization, which stores the gyro data, and you can use the free software Catalyst Browse, which is made by Sony for their cameras, to super stabilize the footage. You still maintain all the control on how much you want it stabilized, and it's pretty fast to process as well. So for Cinelifter, this FX3 would be perfect. Holy crap, a bird just attacked me while well, I was flying. I thought something malfunctioned because I just repaired this FPV drone. That's why you don't fly FPV around people. Even if you're comfortable with your gear, you could always get attacked by a bird and fall out of control. Luckily, I was pretty up high when it happened, so I ended up being okay. But man, 
I got attacked by a bird. Now the fan itself is one of my favorite features because one, it's not gonna overheat nearly as fast, but also it's just gonna give me much more of a peace of mind if I need to go out and do a shoot in the middle of the desert. At 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius, I was able to get it to overheat in standard mode, but I put the heat tolerance to high, 60 frames per second, 4K, 600 megabits per second, and I just kept going and going, would not shut down. Now the A7S III has also been really good in high temperatures, but this just brings it to the professional level. Now I think the camera that I'm really waiting for is in between the FX3 and the FX6, maybe like the FX5. I would love it to be around the same size as the C70 or the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. Sure, it's gonna be bigger than a mirrorless camera, but it's not as big as something like their FX6. I mean, if Sony made something around this size, but oh, if they use the Sony's variable ND filter, that would be awesome. And if they could make it full frame, oh, and the Sony autofocus, the C70 is awesome, but the autofocus just isn't as good as it was on some of their other mirrorless cameras. But yeah, right now my lens collection, half of it is EF mount and some of it's E mount. And if there was like a, a, a good Sony version of the C70, oh yeah, I, I just go all in, all in. That's it, game over, the end. Oh, and if we could also get the color science out of the FX9, they're all close. All the mirrorless cameras and the FX9 and FX6, they're all pretty similar. But the FX9 just has this extra touch of like just color science perfection. No doubt it would be an expensive ass camera, but imagine like the FX9 sensor with IBIS, with their neutral variable ND filter, it just in handheld, like this big, this something like that. Oh, 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 I want it. I just, just thinking about it makes me excited for the future. How many years will it take for us to get something like that? Maybe a hundred. But yeah, in the meantime, I'm gonna be making a video about that Blackmagic 6K Pro. So let me know in the comments what you want me to answer. And I'll try to answer a bunch of these comments in the video about the 6K Pro. And yeah, that's it for this video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Woo, I can finally be myself again.